Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about something massive, the APS3E emulator. The world's first PS3 emulator for Android. Yeah, you heard that right now you can actually play PlayStation 3 games right on your phone. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can play God of War 3 using this emulator. But before we jump in, let's clear one thing. This emulator is surprisingly stable. It can run most PS3 games without any major issues. However, guys, for AAA titles like God of War 3, you'll need a powerful device. I'm talking about at least 6GB RAM and a very high-end CPU, like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or higher. Basically, a device that scores around 10 lakh plus on an 2-2 benchmark will give you playable FPS. Anything below that, the game might feel slow, no matter what optimizations you try. Remember, PS3 emulation is still super demanding, even for emulators on PC. Even on some RTX graphics cards, God of War 3 struggles a bit, so imagine running it on a phone. But still, it's amazing to see how far Android emulation has come. So guys, without wasting time, let's jump straight into the setup and see how this beast performs. My vengeance ends now. Alright guys, let's get straight into the setup. First, open Google and type APS3E GitHub Android. Click on the official GitHub page of the APS3E emulator. Once you're there, scroll down to the releases section and the latest version of the app. After installing it, open the emulator. You'll see a welcome screen, just hit next to continue. Now, the emulator will ask for the official PS3 firmware. Simply select that file inside the emulator. After that, proceed to the next step, where the app will ask for your game location. Just browse and select your PS3 game file. Then again, it'll ask for the firmware path. So just choose the same firmware you added earlier, and you're good to go. Alright, once that's done, the emulator will now ask for your graphics driver. This is super important, because it's what allows the emulator to translate DirectX games into Vulkan API and make them run on your Android device. The recommended driver here is the latest version of the Turnip driver. But guys, sometimes older versions, like Turnip 2 4.3.0, actually perform better. They can fix graphics glitches, remove artifacts, and in many cases, give you smoother performance overall. After you set that up, it's best to place your game files in this specific folder path on your phone. Android then data then APS3E then files then APS3E then config then games. Make sure to put your games right there. Because at this location, you'll get the best FPS and stable performance. If you keep your games somewhere else, you might notice drops or slower loading times. So yeah, stick to the default APS3E config path for the best results. Alright guys, once everything's done, just open the emulator again and hit refresh. Now your APS3E emulator is fully ready to go. By default, your game should run fine with the default settings, but if you want extra performance and smoother gameplay, then follow these quick optimizations. Go to the video settings section. Here, you can set your preferred resolution. But remember, in this emulator, performance actually improves when you tweak the upscale settings properly. To enable upscaling, first turn off strict rendering mode. After that, you'll be able to adjust the resolution upscale option. For better FPS and balanced visuals, set the game quality around 80%. The lower you set it, the more performance boost you'll get. But don't go too low, or your game might start looking a bit blurry. So yeah, keep it around that sweet spot for smooth and clear gameplay. Now, scroll down a bit and you'll find the Vulkan section. From here, you can change your graphics driver if you want to test different performance levels. If you're looking for even more speed, you can enable the option Custom Driver, Force Max Clocks. This basically forces your GPU to run at full power for extra performance. But remember, these settings are mainly for rooted devices. So if your phone isn't rooted, you might not see a big difference in performance. Now, for Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or 8 Elite users, there's one more important tweak. Make sure to enable Read Color Buffer and Write Color Buffer options. This helps fix the white screen glitch that sometimes appears during gameplay. And that's it. Guys, after making these changes, don't touch any other settings. Just leave everything as it is. Now simply tap on your game. The emulator will start compiling shaders, and your God of War 3 gameplay will begin. Now guys, pay close attention. Since this is a AAA title, the first run of the game might sometimes show a black screen. Don't panic, just wait for a few moments, then exit the app and tap the game again. During this time, the emulator is compiling shaders based on your device's settings. A quick tip, it's highly recommended not to change settings repeatedly. Let the shaders compile properly the first time. Once that's done, your game will open, and the lobby will run at full speed. Keep in mind, because this is a heavy game, it might feel slightly slow on lower-end devices. But if you have a high-end device, God of War 3 will be playable with smooth performance. My 
My vengeance ends now. Has returned. I bring the destruction of Olympus. The Titan is gonna fail again. Alright guys, one thing to keep in mind, sometimes the game might freeze at this location. Don't worry, this actually happens on PC emulators like RPCS3 as well, especially when playing without patches, so this is completely normal. Now, there are two ways to fix this. Wait for the emulator developers to add an official game patch option. Once it's added, the freeze issue should be resolved automatically. Use a pre-made save game. Just like I do, this can help you bypass the freeze and continue playing smoothly. So yeah, don't panic if the game stops, it's just part of running a heavy AAA title on emulators. <laughs>